Getting a Switch exclusive Monster Hunter, it's been one of the main priorities since this system first launched in the magical month of March 2017. And now as we approach Monster Hunter Rise launching March 2021, I think that this game could in fact be the first Switch Pro game. It definitely does not look like Generations Ultimate, which felt like a game from the past. And it might not be all the way towards Monster Hunter World. Hi, Tiny Zack. But this game, based on the new gameplay just revealed, is shaping up to be something pretty special. And Nintendo would be so smart to utilize one of their biggest, best games to build towards a much smaller chasm between themselves and their competitors. What's going on everybody? It's Zach from Switch for Smash that like button if you're excited for Monster Hunter Rise, a game that looks so much better in gameplay than it did in the trailer. I thought the trailer was cool, I was hyped for the game, excited that we're finally getting that exclusive Monster Hunter action, but it looked a little bland, it looked a little boring. And today they dropped some really nice footage that showcases this game's expansiveness, scope, verticality, and graphical variety. Now there are frame rate hitches, and that is important to note, and why I think this game might need a bit more before it makes our way to our homes March 26th. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys think this game could bring the Switch Pro alongside it, and let me give you my reasons, okay? The Switch Pro has been teased and tossed around for years, and it's never come to fruition. But the recent rumors indicate that it's probably happening very, very likely in 2021. Nintendo is brewing something in their factories across the sea, and they are getting ready to maybe upgrade their already awesome platform. And it's perfect timing because so are Microsoft and Sony. They are going to be expanding the graphical gap by leaps with their teraflops and their talented new consoles that are about to come out in just a few weeks. So, March seems like a wonderful time. And if you look at this game, it could be a showpiece. It's not as beautiful as World, but it's close. And it's nowhere near as impressive as Miles Morales or something on Xbox Series X, but it looks to have the draw distance and the impressiveness to really elevate Nintendo Switch and say, hey, this system can do really great games. It's got an exclusive lineup that's unbeatable and it doesn't look too shabby either. Because believe you me, at some point, Nintendo's dangerous dance they always play where they release mid-cycle, right? The Switch comes out in the middle of the PS4 generation. The Wii U came out after the PS3. The system is close and then it gets farther and farther. And as soon as the next generation starts, that gap becomes d difficult to swallow for, for, for a lot of players. Now we know that Mario and Zelda don't need the most power to be the most amazing games and Animal Crossing set the tone by saying, hey, we're gonna sell 30 million and we're as cutesy as can be. But I think Nintendo has a desire for more this time around. Their install base is huge, they've courted many 30 parties and they've shown a commitment to integrating games from the AAA space down to the indie space. They want to be a genre spanning, demographic spanning type system that sells well the world over. Monster Hunter has elevated itself to a really impressive title worldwide. World really wrapped me up and it brought so many players from the West into this awesome franchise that has seen success for years now. I feel like with its 2018 launch on PS4 and Xbox One and PC and the subsequent Iceborne expansion, Monster Hunter has made a name for itself. And the fact that the new game is gonna be Switch exclusive is huge. It's huge for Nintendo, it's huge for Switch, it's huge for us as owners of the system and it's a huge opportunity for Nintendo. The game looks like it'll play cool on Switch. Now, I have no idea what state of development this demo build is from, and obviously graphical passes will come, and performance patches will come in the, the five months between now and launch, but I think this game could utilize a little more power. I think it could utilize a little oomph. We saw just this week how well Nintendo can do when their power isn't limited, and by that I mean control on Switch. So freaking cool. In performance mode, the game played great, and it looked nothing like Generations Ultimate. Nothing. Like it's night and day what Control on Switch looks like versus Generations Ultimate. But ah, the caveat. Generations Ultimate ran on a cart, and Control ran on the cloud. We can't have cloud gaming for every single title. It's just not feasible. The internet infrastructure isn't there, and it's annoying to have to connect at all times, especially for a system that wants to be portable. And if your connection isn't so great, then neither is the game experience. But 
Nintendo could come close to replicating what Control on Switch looked like by increasing the power. Do we really want Monster Hunter Rise to look like this? No, say it ain't so. A more powerful chipset, a better screen, and a new Switch that does not segment the audience, but rather delivers an upgrade option is awesome, I think. It doesn't hurt any current owners. It's been four full years. Nobody should be upset. And in fact, it will just expand the Switch user base by letting Nintendo drop the price of the main Switch and offer a Switch Pro that still comes in far below a PS5 or Series X. You see, March 26th makes a lot of sense because by that time, everyone's recovered from their Christmas shopping frenzy. The gift cards actually might still be lurking, but the shine and sheen will have worn off at least slightly from the PS5 and the Series X. I look very confused by this giant T-Rex, and I love the world so much. This game is fantastic. And getting something that could play as well as this on Switch would be mega. I think Nintendo would love for Monster Hunter Rise to be their Animal Crossing of Q1 2021. Now, the game won't go on to sell 30 million copies, but it could be quite a star, and both in Japan and America and Europe if they are able to position it alongside a Switch Pro to fully take advantage, allowing for better performance, more pixels, less lag, and prettier gameplay. Now, scalability is everything, especially for the other platform holders, so why can't Nintendo get in on this? Sony and Microsoft popped a PS4 Pro and an Xbox One X last generation. Nintendo is no stranger in the handheld space, often releasing iterative consoles, and I think it just makes sense. Developers are used to scaling, so there's no need to segment, but allowing for more power might entice devs to still make games for Switch. They are going to have to put things out on PS4 and Xbox One based on Microsoft and Sony's commitment to their already existing ecosystems. So, if Nintendo gives a little nudge, a power boost, I think they can still garner the third-party support that has really helped solidify the Switch as a system for everyone. This system is nowhere near as beloved if it doesn't have The Witcher, if it doesn't have Mortal Kombat, if it doesn't have Outer Worlds, and it doesn't have Doom. I'm not saying those games make the Switch, but they sure make the Switch a better proposition, and they sure grant it greater appeal across ages, demographics, countries, and genres. So maintaining that will be important as the Switch moves to the second half of its life cycle. I don't believe Nintendo is anywhere near ready to launch a Switch 2, so a Switch Pro fits, and Monster Hunter is just the game to do it. Especially because I no longer believe Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 will be launching in the early parts of 2021. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity coming out at the end of November, it's just too close. Nintendo will want to space their Legend of Zelda titles by much more than four months. So with BOTW 2 out of the way, I feel like Nintendo will want to recreate their early year launch success with the Switch. They've got a lot of games lined up to come around this late March time frame, and the 26th feels like a fantastic day for Nintendo to say, hey, the Switch is ready to evolve. Third pillar, Switch, Switch Lite, Switch Pro. It's been rumored forever, but this time I really think it's gonna happen and come true. And Monster Hunter could be the game to really pair it for success. Special console, special Joy-Con, maybe a pro controller, or if they do modify the controllers in any way to offer a pro version akin to the Elite controller on Xbox, hey, give us a better controller, a modified way to play, don't split the gaming audience, but deliver something that can run this to its full potential. I don't want to see Monster Hunter Rise limited by the Switch. This game looks too pretty to have hitches and frame rate issues. It's got a big world, expansive landscapes, and giant monsters, and I want it to get the glory that it deserves. And I think that's gonna mean a Switch Pro to happen. Let me know your take in the comments down below. Do you guys like Monster Hunter? Are you excited for the game? Smash that like button if you think Nintendo is gonna do big things in 2021. I do, and also that like button if you enjoyed the video. I appreciate all you so much. Thanks for being here. That new gameplay looked super sweet, much better than the trailer and I'm pretty pumped to see what they do. I love World a lot. This guy is a menace. And I think Nintendo, you know, they, they could get close to this with Rise. They really could. Maybe not all the way, but close. And it'll be a lot closer if they've got more oomph to work with. For now, though, thanks so much for watching, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay smart out there. I love you all a lot. Appreciate you even more. And until next time, Switch Force out. Really now? That's rude, man.
Woo! Okay. Whoa! 